Our dedication committee has a title. The title is Build a Character Early Childhood with Children Book at Arambi. The reason why we choose that title because we want to share some knowledge about the vocabulary from the book with the title Paddington. So the children at Arambi can increase the knowledge about colors, animals, and etc. And also we can build their character with their story of Paddington. Our activity led by Mr. Khalil Ajis SPDP and the member of Mr. Yang Ardian Suhan SSMPD, Mr. Sunardi SPDP, David Ramanda, Akbar Torik Al Robani, Fahmi Ihsan, Ariani, and the last one Putri Ajeng Ardiana. The following of our activities, the first in the morning, we are doing a simple exercise. Next, the children head to the class and opening by Mr. Sunandi and Fahmi Iksan. And the next activity, we are doing introduce one by one to get close to the children. And then, we give them free test before the class started. children book. The title is Paddington Bear. We explain about the meaning, the color, moral value, and the importance to build the character of early childhood that we adopt from Paddington Bear. Then, we are improving their vocabulary skills by singing together of, an, of the animal names. Next, we give them posters to find out the progress of learning. And the last session, we give them the farewell views. Mr. and Mrs. Brown first met Paddington on a railway platform. In fact, that was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear, because Paddington was the name of the station. The Browns were waiting to meet their daughter, Judy, when Mr. Brown noticed something small and furry near the left luggage office. It looks like a bear, he said. A bear, repeated Mrs. Brown, on Paddington Station. Don't be silly, Henry. They can't be. But Mr. Brown was right. It was sitting on an old letter suitcase marked Wanted on Voyage. As they drew near, it stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said. May I help you? It's very kind of you, said Mr. Brown, but as a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. You are a very small bear, said Mrs. Brown. Where are you from? The bear looked around carefully before replying, Darkest Peru, I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. You don't mean to say you've gone all the way from South America by yourself? 
exclaimed Mr. Sparrow. Whatever did you do for food? Unlocking the suitcase with a small key, the bear took out an almost empty glass jar. I ate marmalade, it said. Bears like marmalade. Mrs. Brown took a closer look at the label and around the bear's neck it said quite simply, please look after this bear. Thank you. Oh, Henry, she cried. We can't leave him here all by himself. There's no knowing what might happen to him. Can't he come home and stay with us? Stay with us, repeated Mr. Brown nervously. He looked down at the bear. Uh, would you like that? He asked. That is, he added hastily, if you have nothing else planned. Oh yes, replied the bear. I would like that very much. I've nowhere to go and everyone seems like in such a hurry. That settles it, said Mrs. Brown. Now you must be thirsty after your journey. Mr. Brown will buy you a nice cup of tea while I go and meet our daughter Judy. But Mary, said Mr. Brown, we don't even know his name. Mrs. Brown thought for a moment. I know, she said. We can call him Paddington after the station. Paddington, the bear tested it several times to make sure. It sounds very important. Mr. Brown tried the tariff mix. Follow me, Paddington, he said. I'll take you to the restaurant. Paddington had never been inside a restaurant before and he was very excited when he <clears throat> Paddington had never been inside a restaurant before and he was very excited when he saw what Mr. Brown had bought him. He was so hungry and thirsty he didn't know which to do first, eat or drink. I think I try doing both at the same time if you don't mind, he announced. Without waiting for a reply, he climbed up onto the table and promptly stepped on a large cream and jam cake. Mr. Brown stared out the window, pretending he had tea with a bear in Paddington Station every day of his life. Henry! cried Mrs. Brown when she arrived with Judy. What are you doing to that poor bear? He's covered in jam and cream. Paddington jumped up to raise his hat. In his haste, he slipped onto a patch of strawberry jam and fell over backwards into his cup of tea. I think we'd better go before anything else happens, said Mr. Brown. Judy took hold of Paddington's paw. Come along, she said. We'll take you home and you can meet Mrs. Bird and my brother, Jonathan. Mr. Brown led the way to a waiting taxi. Number 32, Windsor Gardens, please, he said. The driver stared at Paddington. Bears is extra. Sticky bears is twice as much. Make sure none of it comes off on my interior. It was clean when I set out this morning. The Browns climbed into the back of the taxi and Paddington stood on a little tip-up seat behind the driver so that he could see where they were going. The sun was shining as they drove out of the station and there were cars and big red buses everywhere. Paddington waved to some people waiting at a bus stop and several of them waved back. One man even raised his hat. It was all very friendly. Paddington tapped the taxi driver on the shoulder. It isn't a bit like darkest Peru, he announced. The man jumped at the sound of Paddington's voice. Cream, he said bitterly. All over my new coat. There was a bang as he slid the little window behind him shut. Oh dear Henry, murmured Mrs. Brown, I wonder if we're doing the right thing. 
Fortunately, before anyone had time to answer, they arrived at Winter Gardens. Judy helped Paddington out of the taxi and together they went up some steps toward the green front door. Now, you're going to meet Mrs. Bad, said Judy. She looks after us. She's a bit fierce at times, but she doesn't really mean it. I'm sure you like her. Paddington peered at his reflection in the brightly polished letterbox. I'm sure I shall if you say so, he replied. The thing is, will she like me? Goodness gracious, exclaimed Mrs. Bird. What have you got there? It's not a what? said Judy. It's a bear. His name's Paddington and he's coming to stay with us. A bear, said Mrs. Bear as Paddington raised his hat. Well, he has good manners. I'll say that for him. I'm afraid I stepped in some cream cakes by mistake, said Paddington. I can see that said Mrs. Bird. I'd better get Johnson to run a bath. I dare say you'll be wanting some marmalade too. I think she likes you, whispered Judy. Paddington had never been in a bathroom before and while the water was running he made himself at home. While Jonathan ran the water, Judy gave Paddington some soap and a towel. But Paddington was too busy to bother with either. First, he tried writing his name in the steam on the mirror. Then he used Mr. Brown's shaving cream to draw a map of Peru on the floor. It wasn't until a drip landed on his head that he remembered he was supposed to be having a bath. He soon discovered that wasn't as easy as it sounded. It's one thing climbing into a bath, but quite another matter getting out again, especially when the tub is full of water and your eyes are covered in soap. Paddington tried calling out, Help! at first in a very quiet voice, as to not disturb anyone, then very loudly, Help! Help! When that didn't work, he began bailing the water out with his hat, but the hat had several holes in it and his map of Peru soon turned into a sea of foam. Suddenly, Jonathan and Judy burst into the bathroom and lifted a dripping Paddington onto the floor. Thank goodness you're alright, cried Judy. Fancy making all this mess, said Jonathan admiringly. Even I've never made as much as mess as this. But why didn't you just pull the plug out? Oh, said Paddington. I never thought of that. When Paddington came downstairs, he looked so clean. No one could possibly be cross with him. His fur was all soft and silky, his nose clean, and his paws as lost or traces of the jam and cream. The Browns made room for him in a small armchair by the fire, and Mrs. Bird bought him a pot of tea and a plate of hot buttered toast. Now, said Mrs. Brown, you must tell us all about yourself. I'm sure you must have a lot of adventures. I have, said Baddington earnestly. Things are always happening to me. I'm that sort of a bear. He settled back in his armchair, stretched out his toes toward the fire. I was brought up by my Aunt Lucy in darkest Peru, he began. But then she had to go into a home for retired bears in Lima. He closed his eyes thoughtfully, and a hush fell over the room as everyone waited expectantly. After a while, when nothing happened, they began to get restless. Mr. Brown tried coughing, then he reached across and poked Paddington. Well, I never, said Mr. Brown. I do believe he's fast asleep. Are you surprised? asked Mrs. Brown. 
And that is the end of Paddington Bear, the first book. Did you enjoy our story, lads? I hope you did. But there's one more thing. We're here to learn English, right? So how will we do that by reading a storybook? Well, one of the reasons is, pictures from storybooks help children associate the words they hear or read to the illustrations. According to BritishCouncil.org, high-quality illustrations help children understand as they match what they hear to what they see. For example, if a child does not know what the word bear means, they can simply look at the illustrations provided in the book to understand that the bear is this fella right here. In a journal article written by Kargi Tukru Mart titled Encouraging Young Learners to Learn English Through Stories, they stated that four reasons why literature is important for children according to Gosson 2002. The first is Authentic literature provides a motivating, meaningful context for language learning, since children are naturally drawn to stories. As children are naturally curious, stories are a great way for them to be motivated for language learning, among other things. If they like the story, the more they listen, the more they learn. The next reason is, literature can contribute to language learning. It presents natural language, language at its finest, and can foster vocabulary development in context. Literature is an art form, hence what we read from the greatest pieces of literature, be it a novel for older people or a children's book, contain language at its finest. Reading stories can also enhance a child's, or anyone's actually, vocabulary. For example, going back to the story we read earlier from the part where Mr. Brown takes Paddington to the restaurant, if a child does not know what the word restaurant means, either they can ask someone what it means and they will learn the word or they can use context clues or clues along the text that might tell the reader what the word means. For example, let's read. Paddington had never been inside a restaurant before, and he was very excited when he saw what Mr. Brown had bought him. From that sentence, we can know that the word restaurant is a place where you buy something. But if you continue reading on, he was so hungry and thirsty, he didn't know which to do first, eat or drink. Then we can finally tell that restaurant is a place where you can buy and eat food and drinks. Moving on to the third reason, literature can promote academic literacy and thinking skills and prepare children for the English medium instruction. What I mentioned earlier about learning a word's meaning through context clues is an example of practicing one's thinking skills through reading stories. And the fourth and last reason being, literature can function as a change agent. Good literature deals with some aspects of the human condition, can thus contribute to the emotional development of the child, and foster positive interpersonal and intercultural attitudes. Outside of language learning, reading stories to children, especially stories that provide positive role models and lessons is a great way for children to learn values and morals. In the classroom, a teacher can also use storybooks to further develop the children's language skills and the lessons by utilizing the storybook's themes and content and relating it to the curriculum. Like we've established, kids are naturally drawn to stories. So reading storybooks allows them to enjoy language learning. Like what BritishCouncil.org says, children are busy exploring their world and most are keen to find out something new, particularly 
if it is presented in an encouraging and attractive way. And what is more encouraging and attractive than a storybook? Those are our activities at Ahami Kindergarten. Thank you!